I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to another installment of Old vs. New. Most of these I like to compare certain elements like best character, best villain, and so forth. This episode is going to be more of a general comparison because this one is, well, Teen Titans. Based on the constantly cancelled uncancelled comic book series, Teen Titans found some of its biggest popularity in 2003 on Cartoon Network. It starred Batman stoic sidekick Robin leading a team of super teens to fight evil on a weekly basis. These teens included a moody empath from a parallel universe named Raven, a half-human half-robot football player named Cyborg, a curious energy zapping alien named Starfire, and a literal party animal who can change into any creature he wants, Beast Boy. They reside in their headquarters of phenomenally unsubtle tea outside of Metropolis, and protect the city from all sorts of villains like the Brotherhood of Evil, Mumbo, and their biggest threat, Slade. The best way I can describe the show is it's kind of like a mix between Avatar The Last Airbender and Batman the Animated Series. So as you'd imagine, it had a pretty die-hard following. It had a lot of action and a lot of superpowers, but it also took time to flesh out their characters and focus on the dramatic weight each person is carrying. That's not to say it couldn't be phenomenally goofy though, too. Unlike other DC animations, Teen Titans had a heavy anime influence when it came to their comedy, often distorting their line work in unsolid extremes, changing sizes and screaming while colored lines flew behind them, and just being very... anime. It was an acquired taste to say the least as this comedy was used a lot, but its fanbase got into the way it smoothly transitioned from over-the-top comedy to well-written drama, lasting an impressive five seasons on Cartoon Network and wrapping up with a TV movie finale. Ten years after the premiere of the original show, Cartoon Network announced that Teen Titans were coming back in an all-new series called Teen Titans Go. Fans were ecstatic! That is a lie! Well, at least among the original fans. New fans, primarily young kids, were absolutely thrilled. Teen Titans Go starred the exact same characters and the exact same plot, but its tone and style were 100% different. This was silly, immature, childish, and relished every second of it. Where the original show sprinkled its zany comedy among the intense drama, this was nothing but the zany comedy, feeling closer to Spongebob rather than the original Teen Titans. Where the original might deal with Starfire's feelings of isolation or Raven's relationship with her demonic father, this one focused on waffles. Yeah, that, that was a bit. Waffles, 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 waffles. They constantly broke the fourth wall, combined industry jokes with fart jokes, and kids seemed to laugh their heads off at it. So much so that they even got a cinematic release, and it got surprisingly good reviews. With many critics saying it was not only funny, but they may actually go and watch the show based on how much they enjoyed it. So it seems even adults can get into the wacky childish humor, but the hatred this show received from the fans of the original is... I don't know if I want to use the words impressive or scary, so I'll just say impressively scary. So many say this is a betrayal of what the original show was, and constantly draw attention to how insultingly inferior it is to the original. Fear not, DC's totally fixing this problem as we speak! I've seen both series enough times to get an idea of what they're about, what the characters are like, and what both shows' strengths and weaknesses are. I'll be honest, I feel like I'm the right type of person to compare and contrast these two because... I don't really love either of them. <laughs> Even though I know there's a lot to them. Teen Titans is beautifully animated, written, and acted. It's just not a show that ever grabbed me like Batman or Avatar. Teen Titans Go! is very energized, fast, and uses creatively wild humor. It just doesn't tickle me though like, say, Ren and Stimpy or Looney Tunes. So I feel like I can look at both of these shows impartially judging them on what they are and not what I want them to be. Because of the nature of the shows being so drastically different, it doesn't make sense for me to do element by element comparisons like the other old versus news. It's like comparing Adam West to Michael Keaton, they're such different genres, it doesn't really make sense. This is more a comparison of how well each show makes its impact, if they change the genre they're in in any way, and how watchable they'll be years from now. With that said, what do these shows do that caught on with so many people? Well, aside from being a dramatic and emotionally driven show, like many other DC properties at the time, Teen Titans was one of the first dramatic cartoons to incorporate a sharp style change when it came to its sense of humor. As mentioned before, this is something that would be done often in anime and even in the show Avatar. So well that people even confuse Avatar for an anime. What makes Teen Titans so unique though is that while it's clearly anime inspired, it's still Warner Brothers animation, so it looks a little more like Animaniacs half the time. 
combining several different types of comedic visual styles that, as far as I know, has never really been replicated like this. The reason this is so important is that the audience can laugh harder, and thus we like these characters more so we feel for them when they have to go through the tough emotional journey. Since then, a lot of other shows have used this over-the-top comedy to blend with their action. But Teen Titans was one of the first, if not THE first, American show to implement it with such tireless consistency. Batman could be funny, but it was still primarily serious. Hey Arnold could be serious, but it was still primarily funny. Teen Titans was a total 50-50 split, where the mixing of extreme drama and extreme silliness are very common now in modern kid shows, Teen Titans was one of the originators to go super ridiculous in one moment and then super depressing in another. And they somehow still fit in the environment and tone of the episode. While everything else about it is done very, very well, this is one of the main elements that separates it from other shows. Teen Titans Go, as said before, just goes solely for the laughs. But is there anything really different it's doing for comedy or animation? While the designs are colorful and energized, they're really nothing new compared to other shows on TV currently. Nor is the zany style of humor, as we've seen that in a lot of other shows too. There is, however, one element that separates it from other shows of its kind. It's self-aware self-abuse. The writers are aware of the backlash many fans have, and they constantly work it into the show. Don't get me wrong, many shows and movies have attacked their viewers before, some successfully. There's the please, please, please get a life foundation. Some not so successfully. There is no originality left in the world, Mr. Heat. But Teen Titans Go! constantly comes up with different ways as well as attitudes in addressing the hate they get. Sometimes they go after the fans. You're too old for clowns. No, it's him! When I was a kid, clowns were way cooler! This clown is for kids! Yes, clowns are for kids! Sometimes they go after themselves. Do you like the Teen Titans? Or the Teen Titans? Makes sense. I mean, animation-wise, there's really no comparison. Sometimes they even just celebrate the fans they have. There's one episode where they write in a real kid from the Make-A-Wish Foundation and not only poke fun of the fact that somebody actually really likes them, but also dedicates a song to him at the end, even flying him out for the recording of the episode. Making fun of the fan base is something that can easily backfire, and Teen Titans Go! only did one way of poking fun of the fan base, say, bitterly insulting them only. It probably wouldn't have worked. But because they mix it up every time, one minute praising themselves, another minute crapping on themselves... I thought everyone considered us an abomination. They do! Everybody hates us! And sometimes combining so much you're not even sure if they're making commentary or just telling the jokes needed for the story... It cleverly plays many sides. The same can be said for its shots at DC. The movie was especially harsh on a lot of DC films, shows, and comics. They even made fun of how overly serious a lot of the DC properties are becoming, to a point where they're almost not even recognizable. As said before, this kind of humor has been done in many other shows, but to do it so constantly with the company and people that allow you to do so, and in so many different ways, it really is kind of unique. I don't know if it's something that'll last for years, if anything you could argue it kind of dates it, but it's something that certainly makes it stand out now. How about what actually happens on the shows, though? The stories, the conflicts, etc. The original did a pretty good job of combining episodic adventures with long-running stories. Sometimes it was just a villain of the week, but other times it was an ongoing battle with a villain that would evolve along with the Titans and thus give them new challenges. Mumbo usually has a new creative way to try and take them out that usually wraps up at the end of the episode. But other villains learn so much about the Titans that they can leave them both figuratively and literally torn apart. A villain named Kitaro beats Robin so bad that he leaves the Titans to go figure out more about himself so he can become stronger both physically and mentally. Raven's father finds such effective ways to tighten his grip that it consumes her almost to her end. And of course the run-ins with Slade that always pose new challenges to both their willpower and their weaknesses usually leaves them slightly, if not majorly, different people. It has many episodes you can watch by itself, but rewards you if you've watched for a long time and you can see them grow as characters. Teen Titans Go! again is episodic madness. But their challenges are also very enjoyable because, well, they're usually very selfish. True, they do save the city from various threats, but it's usually for the reason of just wanting to be famous. When not wasting time with things like waffles, they, especially Robin, focus on how they can be the most popular superheroes around. The movie especially focuses on this by trying to go back in time and stop all the superheroes' origins, only to find they apparently suck so bad as heroes that the world is on fire and they couldn't save the day. So they put all their origins back to normal. I guess that does make me appreciate the challenges because, for children's programming, they're all kind of awful. And they know it and love it. 
That's a kind of ballsiness I have to appreciate on some level. So again, for what both genres and demographics they're appealing to, they seem to do a pretty good job. But okay, let's get to the tipping point. The one reason that one of these shows is better than the other. That's right, there's one specific reason, despite their different genres, that actually makes one far superior. Can you guess which one is the winner at the end of the day? Well, of course it's that one! Yeah, big surprise, Teen Titans is obviously the better show, even though Teen Titans Go is an entirely different genre. But what's the ultimate reason for this choice? These characters were designed for this show. These characters were not. You see, these characters were made to work off of each other more than just comedically. They were supportive of each other, angry with each other, in love with each other. Their unique personalities were so different that they could utilize them in both fighting enemies and their own inner struggles. They were a dynamic that added both conflict and togetherness with their personalities alone. Suddenly you have to take those same characters and throw them in a self-absorbed world of absurdity which can work maybe for an episode because you're seeing them as the exact opposite, but it's trickier when you had to have that last for a series. Because they weren't originally designed for a strictly comedic dynamic, you can't expect them to fully thrive as a comedic team. The Three Stooges work as a comedy team because that's what they're designed for. If they were suddenly thrown into an action series, that wouldn't make any sense. Okay, it'd be cool for a minute, but it would wear off very quickly. Also, these characters suffer from a very similar problem the new Ninja Turtles suffer from. That being, once again, they're all essentially the same character. Look at this episode where they need to take down a clown. Raven is in a clown outfit. In the original Teen Titans, that would be funny because it'd be so out of character. Even wearing a dress puts her in a bad mood. So wearing a goofy clown outfit should be hysterical, but it's not because she's already a clown. They all are. In the same episode, Starfire is afraid of clowns. This is a quality you could give to any of them and it would make no difference. It would be the same reactions, the same lines, the same impact. If it was Beast Boy, the reaction would be the same. If it was Cyborg, the reaction would be the same. Even in Looney Tunes, the personalities of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and Elmer Fudd are so different that all you have to do is put them together and the comedy writes itself. Here, there's too many times where they're all idiots, all blood hungry, all party animals. Their differences are beyond minor. For example, Raven will usually have a frown, Beast Boy will have a smile, and Starfire will say the a lot. They even reference that in an episode. Aside from that though, they usually just all act the same way. Even though the voice acting and the deliveries are still great, when the comedy works, it's 100% what's being said, not who said it. So yes, the original Teen Titans is much better than Teen Titans Go, and it's probably gonna last years and years and years. But it's still kind of fascinating the hate Teen Titans Go gets. Don't get me wrong, I can see why some people don't like the show, and I myself have made some Teen Titan Go jokes before. But the outrage some fans have over it does make me wonder if it's not only worth it, but possibly fueling it. I always see people post how bad the show is and the latest atrocity that happened in the latest episode, but if you don't like it, why are you watching it? How do you know about these atrocities? The cruelest attention you can give any form of entertainment is no attention. If people don't watch it, they don't make it. So why do so many haters watch it, especially if it's clearly intended for younger kids? We got excited going from the 60s Batman to the Tim Burton Batman. In fact, if anything, it seemed really cool to go to something so different. But at the same time, we did go from the Tim Burton Batman to the Joel Schumacher Batman, and that was not as cool. Especially because it was the same actors doing a more silly style that none of us wanted. It's hard not to see a comparison. But those movies had little in terms of being clever, and even though Teen Titans Go can get a little annoying sometimes, it does have its clever moments. Maybe it's also because the original show was cancelled and nobody really knows the reason why. So to have a new show replace it that not only portrays them as goofy characters, but also seems to be popular enough to get its own theatrical movie, and the other one just getting a TV movie. Perhaps Teen Titans Go just happened too soon. I mean, it wasn't that many years since the last one stopped. I don't know if I would be ready for something so different so close to when the original aired. Whatever the reason, it still has a fan base of both kids and surprisingly adults. DC has teased new versions of Teen Titans in the near future, maybe even a return to the original. Whatever is in store for them, there is no doubt that Teen Titans is a unique and powerful show that'll last for years. Teen Titans Go is a waste of time that brings joy to a lot of kids and even some adults, and both are totally fine for doing so. No matter what your thoughts are on Teen Titans or Teen Titans Go, they've definitely both left a big impact 
pleased a lot of people, angered a lot of people, confused a lot of people. Either way, we watched. And maybe the power of these characters is, no matter what scenario they're put in, genre, style, or whatever, they'll always last in one way or another, because there will always be a uniqueness that draws us to them. You know, and for all the talk of how bad Teen Titans go, I was really let down. I want to see something amazingly bad, like shockingly bad. You hear me, universe that just keeps giving me bad movies to watch? I want something so bad, I can't believe it. A new kind of bad that'll blow me away. <laughs> Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and this week we are doing Finca International. Individuals living in the world's most challenging economies live without access to critical financial tools. These tools enable progress towards healthier, more resilient lives. Finca International was founded in 1984 on the notion that giving small loans to the poor has the power to transform entire communities in sustainable ways. After impacting tens of millions of lives with responsible financial services, they are widening their focus to catalyze further economic growth in underserved markets around the world. They remain committed to market-based solutions and are supporting the rise of social enterprises, developing basic service and financial innovation to help low-income families and communities achieve a better standard of living. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you can see how much stability they bring across Africa, Eurasia, Latin America, the Middle East, and South Asia. And with an A rating on Charity Watch, it's hard not to be impressed. Click on the link and help these people who have over 30 years experience transforming lives, reshaping poverty, and strengthening communities. Mm -hmm.